Hello there, welcome to Mark Shrimp Tanks. Right, so for me guys, it is a Saturday morning and it is the end of my week, but I thought what I would do was I would record it the week in advance, so this is a week old when you see it, but it makes sense that I show you the Saturday morning when it's Saturday morning for you, instead of me trying to rush out. So you get what I mean? Let's get on with the show today, right? So we're going to do a feeding because Saturday is my food day. We're just going to blather about stuff I've done in the shrimp room. And uh, we're going to see how the shrimp are this morning because I've actually come in here and I've started pressing the record button on my camera without actually checking to make sure the shrimp are okay. Some stuff guys I do off camera quite a bit like uh, just cleaning filters and stuff because I, I don't think you guys want to see that but um, yeah yesterday I had a lot of stuff to do in the house and when I came in here I thought yeah I need to do some stuff but I don't always want to record things, right? So let, let's, let me show you, for example, look, if I swing you around, you can see the open Ula tank, look, like here. Isn't it looking nice? Right, and yeah, all I did here was I removed the big hang of back filter because I noticed um, there was probably just a little bit too much flow. And I changed the light, guys. I changed the light on there to one that was a wee bit, God, I didn't notice how bad my camera was off uh, level there. <laughs> Let me zoom in a bit and you'll see what I mean, how active they are. Isn't that nicer? Right, and if I zoom in even further, we might be able to see the baby shrimp. So this is what was missing with hang, having a hang on back filter. And there is, uh, I guys, I can't tell if you can actually see anything there, but there's like loads of baby shrimp. Like free floating, just around about here in the center. And yeah, the tank itself, it just, it just looks so much, much better, right? So I've always had more luck with having some type of filtration in the tank, but having the flow very, very slow, like barely on, just enough so that the water isn't stagnant. And you see, I have the same thing with my other Opiuli tank down there. Let me get you back around here. Yeah, so I did that the other day. Uh, I had a little bit of an emergency yesterday. I came in here and I was in, in full panic mode because, yeah, I thought I had a leak. In one of my tanks, let me show you here. Some of you guys will be familiar with the paper towel test. And you, what all we're doing here is testing to see if the leak continues. And I'm pleased to say my leak didn't continue. In a nutshell, guys, I came in yesterday morning. This whole bottom layer of this wooden panel here was soaked through. And there was water on here dripping down onto the next tank. And there was a tiny little puddle in the floor. Right, and the, the reason I went into panic mode because normally that means that you have like a slow leak. Right, which means for me, I'd have to drain this tank and I'd have to remove all the shrimp to fix it. And why it would have been such a pain is because this is probably my most successful tank in the room for just the sheer amount of baby shrimp. Like on the sides right now, there's, there's like 20 something shrimp just on the side there, little tiny teeter tot little things. I don't know if you can see them on the other side, but this would have been a, a really hard one for me to drain all at one time, fix, move all the shrimp to another tank. Yeah, so it it got me thinking like uh, we should always have spare tanks. Now I currently only have one empty tank in my house upstairs, but it is meant for something else. So I wouldn't have really had a tank available, a prioritized tank that I wanted to use for them. I would have had to put them all into another tank up the top, but yeah, uh, it's probably always worth having just one or two empty tanks in your shrimp room for stuff like that. I mean, you could always get new new shrimp and add them to the tank as well. But so I'm pleased to see you can see the test. I haven't removed the piece of paper yet. Uh, it's bone dry. Yesterday it was kind of wet, but I always like to use paper towel because you can see the discoloration there. It does actually suck up any of the excess water and then it just goes bone dry. If it is, the leak isn't a problem, it just goes bone dry. And guys, let me just tell you what it was while we're here. Look, I'm going to move the camera so you can see. Come over here, the wee buggers. Now you'll see on the top here, I have. I thought a mosquito went past me there. I have these little planter things on the top here and it's like the sim same as this one here. I'll probably have to do something about this one here. Can you see? 
And what it is is this moss, it grows up and over the gap between the two tanks. Like this, look. If I, if I remove this, you might be able to see what I'm talking about. Now, see the moss on the back? It's grown up and over the gap between the two tanks. And uh, the position, this was the one that I thought was leaking yesterday. I actually moved this one. You can, guys, you can actually see where it was wet from the side. Let me just show you. You can actually see where it was wet from the side. It's very, very faint, but you can see like there's a difference in the colour. See, it's very dark there. That's where the water has went up the moss, over the gap here, and then down the side, and down through this big gap. And this is where I went into pure panic mode. But yeah, I had that little hang on back pot there next to this filter, so there was a lot of splashing and stuff in this area. You can see where my little issue was. But yeah, we're, I'm pleased to say that wasn't the problem, which is always a bonus. Yeah, I hate I hate unexpected issues like that because yeah, it just means a lot of work, loads and loads of extra work. So yeah. What we're going to do, guys, as well, we're going to actually feed the tanks. Um, I, I've actually, all last week, right, I was thinking about this food that I use. These Tetramin tablets, you would have seen that I used these last week. Um, when I fed the tanks, the shrimp ate the stuff, but guys, the, the food was so messy in the tank. And that's not really the way I want my tanks to go. I don't want them to be uh, full of excess food because some of them you would have seen there was just an excess amount left over at the end. And I don't want my tanks to be like that. I want them to be clean, super clean, clean. We're gonna watch her feeling like a hawk. So today, I thought we would feed them glass garden shrimp dinner. You guys have seen me feed this stuff to my shrimp before. And we're simply just going to do the same as we usually do. Is uh, put some on a little tray like this so you can see. You don't have to do this, but this is just for camera so you guys can see the actual food. Right, and then we're going to add it to the tank. So I'm going to put this into the actual dishes as well. We're going to put them into a little tube, feeding tube, wherever it is. I have a little bit of a sneezy nose today, if I sneeze on camera, which I'm going to do, I could just feel it. We have a little feeding tube and we're going to put it in. Let's actually put it in a couple of them here, just so you can see. So I am on the hunt for a new food type. If any of you guys would like to make any kind of recommendations for a solid food that is preferably um, vegetable based, with minimal amounts of um, animal products and stuff in it. And that's not just because I don't eat that stuff, I'm, I'm thinking about the, the actual diet of the shrimp. You know, maybe, th maybe things like insect larvae and stuff is probably okay in our shrimp food, but I don't want to go overboard with excess stuff like um, dairy products and egg and milk and whatever else right so I'm, I'm trying to do my fish feeding my shrimp feeding my fish i can't believe i said that that's sacrilege on this channel i'm trying to do my shrimp feeding a little bit different when right? i'm going to go even further when i'm doing this as well i want to really look into alternative foods as in things that contain like uh maybe contain garlic and things like aloe vera and stuff like that because I'm, I'm, I'm getting really interested in uh, the shrimp's actual health and how to make them healthier because if you do this stuff guys, right, less pollution, you make the shrimp healthier, they actually function better, they breed more, right? so it's that simple. Let me quickly fill up the rest of these tanks and we'll come back in, I don't know, like 10, 15 minutes and we'll have a look at the shrimp. Alright shrimp lets it's been roughly about 10 minutes and the shrimp are very very ravenous which is always a great sign. So what I think we will do is, because this camera isn't so great close up, I thought what we'll do is, is we'll break out the macro camera. 
mosquito just flew right in front of my face there. We'll break at the macro camera and I think uh, we'll use this and we'll just go from this side, work our way around back to here because you'll be able to hear me as well through the microphone because I'm still using this camera. This will be like dummy footage kind of and this will be overlaying on top. Right, so let's go over here. Yeah, the, the shrimp have been very ravenous so far. It's literally, I'm lying guys if I said it would be even 10 minutes, probably less than that. But um, it just shows you that what we're doing works, right? So you're going to see clips. I'm going to take a second, get stuff in focus. And then I'm going to press record and what I record you will see on screen. So these are the fancy crystal blocks or fancy black tigers, whatever you want to call them. And yeah, they did have babies in here, which I'm going to show you if we can find them. Because I think these ones were just born last week, so they're not mega mega active. But let me just have a look around the side because yeah, there was, I think there was quite a few in the sponge filters and stuff. We can see, yeah, there is. It's always nice to see new babies. So you can see here there's like uh, ones there, ones there, there's a couple of different sizes and they'll be like this just through the tank all over bits of moss and whatever else and near the front like this. You see the little things crawling around? Let's quickly go over here because yeah I've just noticed that my body is dying on this camera and we've just started filming these are my mixed bee shrimp. They've also just had loads of babies. Let's see if we can pick some up the camera. Oh, you can see them there. You see them in the gravel? That's what I love to see. Crystal red starting to come to the front, which is always nice to see. A little bit of lack of babies in here. Well, this is a tank where we recently fixed the filtration. All right, so these were the galaxy, the red type phenotype boas, and. And uh, yeah, I can't really tell with my glasses if the buried girl is here, but there was one buried girl. So far, these guys are looking gorgeous. Let's look at the super crystal reds. For some reason, that wasn't in focus. But these never fail to disappoint. These guys always have babies, and you can see that they're going berserk for the food. Let's have a little look at the mix I got from Raymond. These are the I think these are his own boa select or his own type of shrimp he was trying to breed. You can see there's a very distinct pattern in the heads with these ones which I think is very cool. All looking really nice and healthy. Alright so these were more like a galaxy type fishbone shrimp but yeah you can see lakes in this one here. They definitely do have boa genetics in them as well. Looking nice aren't they guys? Galaxy is probably my favourite shrimp, I think. Galaxy. There, that one there definitely is a boa, you see? Some type of boa. By the way, this, the patterns in the head tend to get smaller as they grow, so the circles become larger. But these guys are gorgeous. These are the Goldens. Quite a lot of berry girls in here, so we're going to have a quite a big baby boom, I think. Um, it's just a little bit disappointing that my battery's running out because it feels like I'm rushing through the shrimp today. But you can see guys that these are really really nice looking shrimps. I'm so glad I decided to start a tank of these again. You see the buried girl there. You probably see quite a few buried girls. Oh yeah, baby boom inbound I think. Alright, crystal red shrimp. They are uh, just breeding all the time. Got the young on the leaves and stuff. Gorgeous, gorgeous shrimp. So can I zoom out a little bit more? Let's see, can you see anything in the, in, the, in the glass? They tend to all come to the front, but there's uh, some shrimp on the side, you can see them. Those are actually shrimp. I know my camera works awful, but those are actually shrimp. So these are more fancy crystal blocks. And these are the grow out ones, so some of them you can tell are from fancy crystal blocks because uh, you can see the, they kind of look like uh, crystal blocks a little bit. You see them? Like that one kind of has a Hinamura on the back. All gorgeous, none of these are buried, but this was a grow out tank. 
skulls looking gorgeous and uh, I'm, I'm actually surprised there's no baby shrimp in here yet because uh, things have been going in the right direction in here for at least a good month and it's very noticeable guys, you probably notice it as well how active they all are which is always a good sign, so that means baby boom is on its way as well Right, so this is my blue bolt tank. You could probably notice a big difference from when you saw these the last time. They've actually went quite blue. To me, with blue bolts, that is a sign that the tank is very healthy, right? So, yeah, there is a little bit lack of babies in here, but I'm seeing enough positive signs, guys, that I'm going to keep going on the path I'm going with this tank because I do see the odd baby shrimp in here. It's just that there isn't loads and loads of them yet, but don't they look gorgeous? They look very healthy, don't they? I love blue bolts. Alright, so this was a little project. Remember, there's a little side project we were doing. These are the start of our fancy crystal uh, reds. And yeah, they were very small coming out of the other tank. But this is how you start a colony. Sorry about that glare. Probably the best picture you're going to get here. Some of them look like crystals, some of them look like fancy crystals. But this is how we're going to start this colony. There's not so many. I think I think when I we put these in here, there was like nine or something. All right, guys. This was just a grow tank for our fancy crystal reds. It's fancy soup, not fancy super crystal reds. My bad. And you can see that they're very healthy. This one there's buried. I think the one at the back there is buried as well. And so this tank is going in the right direction. All right, guys, would you like a bowl of shrimp? Looking good, isn't it? Let's see, the, the in record mode, this doesn't want to focus so much, but yeah, all the shrimp look mega healthy. I actually can see babies in here as well on the, the moss and whatnot. And what was quite strange was there was a red one, a red uh, zebra pinto just popped out of nowhere in here. So it just goes to show you that all these genetic mutations, sometimes you get throwbacks from what was bred into them before. They're looking gorgeous. Crystals, crystal reds, crystal red cherry shrimp even. My god, my wording is getting bad. I'm sure I have some kind of dementia going on or something like that. But yeah, this tank is actually doing really, really well. Lots and lots of cherry shrimp. Bristle nose is keeping them all in order, as you can see here. It's very, very territorial, isn't it? Bristle, bristle nose plecker. You see it wafts its tail, it's like, get away. Get away from my food. Alright, so these are meant to be uh, some type of really. They're actually ones I, I actually bred myself. But um, yeah, I think um, you probably need to upgrade this tank. Because it's just too small for breeding, I think. Looking gorgeous though. Alright, I'm looking at my bigger uh, Neocaridina tank. You just saw a bristle nose pleco there wafting away. You can see that if you could probably make it out of the back there, there's a bristle nose pleco in its cave. I actually can't see the food here at all. It's probably fallen in the gap out of all these shrimp. And uh, yeah, these guys are doing quite good. I'm trying to get close to this guy before he disappears. This is one of my Australian uh, crayfish, red claw crayfish. I wonder why they get called that mark. These guys are really gorgeous as well. Now unfortunately in this tank, I think the female died a long time ago. These guys are very cannibalistic, so you don't give them enough space. Then, yeah, the smaller shrimp, smaller crayfish tend to get eaten. Alright guys, this is the one that we would call the Blue Dream Shrimp Tub. You remember the video that I made with Blue Dream Shrimp Tub? That did quite well. Well, there's a little bristle nose there, and we've got a lot of endlers and stuff in here as well. There is actually shrimp in here too. But they're looking rather healthy. All these lovely endlers. Look at them. Aren't they gorgeous? Alright, so yeah, th these are my um, Opa Uli. Aren't they looking absolutely gorgeous, guys? They're um, 
go berserk since I put this footage. I do apologize if it, go, if it goes out of focus sometimes. I just I physically can't see very well on the little screen that you look at to see if stuff is in focus. So yeah, you have to bear with me. That you're not only dealing with a Scottish guy, but you're dealing with a blind Scottish guy. But aren't these gorgeous? I actually don't think I've ever seen them this red. Alright, so this is the bigger Opa'uli tank that uh, sits above the one that you've seen there. Yeah, these are doing really, really well as, as well. Really, really, really well. Look at all the buried girls and stuff. God, the shrimp room is uh, alive with shrimp. So shrimpless, I hope you enjoyed that little feeding bit that we just did, little feeding section of the video, because it's just the start of this video. We will be planning to do more stuff this week. Um, so this is, guys, as we talked about before, I'm going to try and split up these videos so that they are um, a whole week at a time. If you're not sure of, or you don't follow the concept of the type of video I'm trying to make, my, my videos are going to be more long form content. So all of this stuff that you've seen up to this point in this video is one day for me. But I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to film for at least three, maybe four days and then put them all together so you guys can see all these clips all at once on a Saturday morning, right? Because I, I think long form can talk, long form content is the way to go, right? Because I see in other videos, guys are having a lot of success doing it this way. So yeah, let's give it a go this way. It's easier for me to do it this way because it means I'm not having to uh, force rush videos for YouTube or like sit at a desk editing constantly because my, my videos will be full of mistakes. I'm just noticing the amount of flies and stuff coming in here. So that is one thing that we must do is uh, fix these windows with some mosquito mesh because there's blue bottles and mosquitoes and everything coming in. I opened that window because it's a little bit warm in here today, 25 degrees. So we'll do that as well. Mosquito mesh. Uh, we have a tank up here. I keep on saying to do this tank. We have to do it this week because yeah, this, this failure with this tank that we had or my perception of it being failed when I thought it was leaking led me to think, yeah, we need more tanks. So that is what we're going to do as well. We have to start fixing our tanks because I want to fill this space here. Um, the fan shrimp in that tank will be going into the middle tank because this tank is well big enough to hold a couple of fan shrimp and it's got more circulation and whatever else in the tank that I think fan shrimp will like. We can't breed them, so it's okay that they go in here. Um, so we'll have that. And yeah, we'll see what else we do, but that, that's what you've got coming up. Good morning guys, welcome back. Before we go any further, right, we're going to do a test. I want you to smash that like button. I want to see if it glows when you hit it, right? So do me a favour and hit that like button and see what happens. Today, we're going to be uh, starting another bee shrimp tank up here. And we're also going to be doing another huge water change in this tank here. Because yeah, it has struggled a little bit for the last maybe month. This is a big neocaridina tank and... Yeah, I'm just not seeing the numbers in here that I used to, so I don't know if my room is too cold or the water's too dirty or what. So we're going to give it a big water change. I'm going to see if I can find a heater as well, so we can put a heater in here. Normally I don't have heaters in my tanks in the shrimp room because my bee shrimp like it a little bit colder, but that's not so good for breeding for neocaridina. For example, right, so our golden number for bee shrimp breeding is roughly between 20 and 22 degrees Celsius. And that is kind of on the lower limits, what I would recommend for keeping neocaridina. Neocaridina optimal breeding temperature is probably up there a little bit towards 24 degrees Celsius, which is more in line with the most tropical fish, right? So we have bristlenose pleco also in this tank, and I think it would be in their best interest if the water would just start a little bit warmer, because they've not bred for a long time either. Right, so let's, uh, we'll do that. I'm going to set up that tank. I haven't made up my mind yet if we're going to use um, Amazonia because I still have a bag of Amazonia underneath it but I also have a bag of Tropica guys and I want to test some tanks in this newer method what will we call it? The lazier method of never doing water changes basically and I want to see if our method of never doing water changes controlling your feeding to a really optimal level and um, I want to see if it, we can make soils work that we previously couldn't make because sometimes it's just too easy to blame something for mistakes that you're making, right? So in the past, if something's never worked, we thought maybe it's the soil, soil's not good, blah, blah, blah. Well, has it been the soil? We're going to test. I think we'll put Tropica plant soil in here. I'm going to do all the measuring. We're going to measure ammonia, nitrates, nitrites, pH, uh, 
conductivity, and I'll convert that into TDS for you guys that don't have conductivity meters. So that is what we have planned for today. As we always say, it's another day, another cup of coffee here in the shrimp room. Hmm. And there is one other thing, I got this in the post. Let's have a little look at it. This is from Kelvin Wong. He's a very good shrimp breeder from Singapore. I think Kelvin's from Singapore. My apologies if you're not. <laughs> and he is one of the guys that breeds loads and loads of boa. I haven't even looked at this. Oh look at that. Isn't that an awesome shrimp poster? Right, and it's laminated as well. So I'll leave a link in the first uh, comment on this video where you can go to Kelvin's page and buy one of these if you want one. Right. Let me show you a little bit closer. Looking good. I like that it's laminated, especially for being in the shrimp room. So yeah, we'll have to find a place for this. I don't want to put it on any of the walls yet. Maybe on a door. Yeah, we'll do that today. Thank you very much for that, Kevin. Right, look, guys, let's get on with our little video here. Let's start with, what do I need to do water-wise? Let me think about this. I have one barrel of reverse osmosis water there that we need to remineralize, right? So I don't have enough water to do both tanks at the same time. But what we can do is this. We can make the water for bee shrimp and then we can use some GHKH plus powder to raise the pH. So it, it goes from being a soft water, bee shrimp, reverse osmosis water to neocaridina water by us just adding some different buffer to it. Does that make sense? Right, let's do it. Let's stop talking. Let's do it. All right, guys, let's do the water first. We're doing the water prep for our soft water bee shrimp tank first because it's what we're going to use first. Right, so let's switch this on. I'm going to show you the pH of the RO water, which is uh, pretty inconsequential right now because we haven't added any buffer to it, but that's just to give you an idea of what the water is. When I add it to my tanks, for example, right, so before I was um, adding some acid buffer to this to add to my tanks, I don't think I need to actually. 5.43 as a base is pretty good. This will adjust itself to whatever the tank is. And I'm going to give you the reading of my uh, conductivity because yeah, I, I drained this the other day of our test water. I remember we were doing testing and I didn't drain it all the way so the conductivity is going to be a wee bit high. Let me see what is it. Yeah, the conductivity is a wee bit high. It's about 19 something like that. But it's still fine. I'm not going to waste water. This was water I would have used and a bee shrimp tank anyway. So let's grab our salt and mineral GH plus because that's what we're going to use here. And we're going to add some in here. Now I can't remember exactly what the dose is of this. You know what I mean guys from my memory how long have I had this container and I can't remember the dose. I can't remember if it's 10 or if it's 5. <laughs> I think it's 10. I will put 10 in and we'll see what the actual conductivity goes to because 10 is just an easy number to remember, isn't it? 10, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, Nine. Nine. Ten. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, got you. There, you thought I was going to put the last one in. Alright, so I'm going to give this a few minutes just to allow it to mix up, and then we'll take another reading from a race. So, you, you do, when you do this, you better give it like a good ten minutes just to let it mix in and dissolve. Alright, let's come back in a minute. Alright, guys, it has been a good ten minutes. Let's have a little look and see what the numbers say. 10 minutes, 217. Yeah, same, which is still too low. Right, so if you're new to my channel and don't know this, I've actually changed from having my the conductivity in my tanks from about 200 up past 300 because it helps with uh, molting. Shrimp just molt easier when you're 
hardness as an example is a little bit higher. Right, so that wasn't enough and it means that we put in 10 for 200 so we need to put in at least 5 for another 100 I think. Let's see. 1 2 3 4 5 right, So I started doing this based on a recommendation from a friend because I was having one single problem tank over here that was my it was my grow up tank for my super crystal reds right and, and they were having a failed molt every so often and it was just so annoying it would be like buried, a buried female would be having a failed molt every so often and based on a recommendation I put it from 200 up to 300 and it fixed the problem so yeah it worked let's come back in another 10 minutes and we'll see what the reading is and by the way guys I actually forgot that when I do this that I'm actually starting to use an acid to control the pH in this because our initial pH reading that we did in here 5 point whatever it was for the RO isn't the pH of the water before it goes into the tank look 6.22 right so 6.23 so to me this is a little bit high and what I want to do here is, we're, today is going to be the first time where we fully test this, where we're going to add some P, set of pH down to this mixture as well. And we'll see if we can bring this down to a, a number that's better for the shrimp tank. So I'm, I'm talking about 5.5 .5 to 5.8, right? So it's just a little bit too high. And I think previously we had put in 5 mil. Let's try 2.5 mil of set of pH down, or 3 mil. We'll just try 3 mil, round it off a little bit. And we'll see what number that gives us on this, okay? Let's do this stuff with the Sarah pH down. So this is my first time actually using it this way to go into an, an actual tank. Um, we don't really do an awful lot of water changes in the shrimp room, and but when we do, we should make sure that we adjust the pH to match the tanks. So as I said, we're going to go with three mil this time, which is almost up to that level there from the base. Guys, should we see what it is before we put the stuff in? 6.45 You see what I mean, how this is starting to creep up on the not so great side, so if you're not adjusting the pH before you put it into your tank you, you will be drawing out pH from the tank when you add this kind of water to it. If that makes sense, if, it should make sense that you're reducing the pH in the tank if you're adding water to the tank where the pH is much higher because it's having, the tank acid is having to fight the buffer in this to reduce it 6.46 just see and so we're going to add 3 mil I think this little pipette might be broken It doesn't want to. S one second, guys. I'll get another pipet. This one doesn't want to draw in the stuff so well. All right, so I've got a little syringe here, guys. Just be careful when you deal with any kind of acids. They try not to get it in your hands or wear gloves. So let's put this in and let's turn on our pH meter and see what it does. We'll give this a good half an hour in here to mix, and then we'll come back and we'll see if it actually does anything. Okay. Alright guys, so this is going to be a super, super simple setup. We're actually going to add in just 4 litres of soil. I'm going to use a scoop like this, just to pour it straight in, nothing fancy. And yeah, we're going to try Tropical Master Soil in this, because it is very nutrient rich as well, it's meant for plants, which means we will check to see if it has um, Ammonia in it, I can't remember, I have used this soil before and the reason I want to use this guys is because it's quite readily available and ADA is getting harder and harder to source. Now this is comparable in price in Norway to ADA. This bag I think it cost me about 700 kroners which is about $60 which is hell of expensive for a bag of soil. So let's uh, Let's just get this done. 
going to put in roughly four litres, right? So we're just going to pour it straight in the front. You know, I almost forgot there to put in our bacterial powder. Guys, every single time we do a video, I forget to put this in. Right, and it's not 100% necessary, but I do think it helps to start the tank off a little bit, right? So let me show you what this is. There's loads and loads of different bacterial powders in the market. This is uh, dead shrimp powder. I'm simply going to put some near the back, right? Like so. You don't need much. You don't need much at all. And I know you're way over there and you can't really see, but that is the way this video is going to be today. You're seeing it from a different angle. Just think about it that way. Okay, so let's add in more soil. Tropica. Where are they from, by the way? Tropica. Is that a Danish company? Tropica? Danish, maybe. Let's pour it in. Two. I think four will be enough. And then we're going to go over there and have a look at our water before we put it into the tank. And I think what I'm going to do as well is I'm actually just going to take a filter from one of these tanks because I have, in most of my tanks I have two or three filters in each tank so we're going to actually just take a, ta a filter from a tank that's currently working. Let me quickly show you this soil and you'll see why I want to use this as well because it is, it is actually quite a nice looking soil, it's very very dark kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, ADA V2 you see it? it's a nice looking soil we'll get this in here and that should be enough I think where's my wee steps? guys would you like to come over here so you can see a little bit closer come on I'll grab your wee legs again you wee bar stewards Wow, you are really high up there, guys. Whoa, look how high you are compared to me. That's how high this rock is. Right? Let me grab this this uh, set of steps. Oh! Let me grab the set of steps. I'm going to grab... Uh, where is it? There it is. Now, I found this little thing in the kitchen. Right, and I think my wife probably uses it for spreading out dough and stuff. But it belongs in the shrimp room now. <laughs> huh? She thinks she can make me whatever she likes. Ha ha ha! Who's got the last laugh now? And let's uh, get this spread out. I'm going to cover the little powder at the back. Oh! Yeah, this is a lot of soil. And so, guys, you can probably tell my preferred method when I'm doing these shrimp tanks now is maybe soil that is two or three centimeters deep like this. And one or two sponge filters and a plant, and that is it. What is it they say? Keep it simple. Keep it simple, stupid. Because then there is less things to go wrong. If you're wondering what all this is, it's just from yesterday. I actually cleaned this tank and put it here yesterday. Right, so, um, I think we're going to try and get our water in here. So let's get back over there and we'll check this water. We'll see how it's got on because... Um, we'll be able to fill this up today. We'll be able to put the filtration in. But then, apart from that, it's quite a boring tank setup video. I don't really want to put a plant in here for a couple of days to allow the pH to settle but let's go back over here and we'll check how that water is doing. Alright so I actually added the pump in here, the circulation pump to keep it going and around and around and around. Right, so we added, what was it, 5ml and you can see this is at 5.98. This will probably creep up a tiny little bit if we left it going like overnight or something it'll be creep up a little bit but that's almost half a pH that it dropped with what was it, 3 mil of this stuff? So ideally guys, I would like this to drop down to under 5.8, right? It seems like very, very small increments, but that's what I want to get it to. Because this, the lower that you get it, the less work that your soil has to do to buffer it down, right? And then you, with us not doing water changes, it lasts longer, right? So let's add a little bit more acid into this. We're going to try a smaller, much smaller increments until we hit our desired amount. Right, so I'm going to use the syringe again. Um, guys, I'm just actually going to use half a mil increments, not half a mil, half, oh, let me see. Yeah, half a mil increments, my God. 
I was right first time. So you can see here, one half. Let me see. Hello, focus. focus. I don't know why it doesn't want to focus today. Right, so that's half a mil. Let's put half a mil in. And we're going to see what that takes us to because I find that the closer you get to your number, the less acid it takes normally to hit that number. If that makes sense, because in the beginning your acid is having to dissolve all the carbonates in the water to get that actual acidity level, right? So there's more carbonates in the water to begin with than there is when you get closer to your target. Oh my god, it's so hard to explain. Especially if you're a dummy like me. So as you can see, look. You see how like there's a sudden drop? 5.5 there was quite a sudden drop there, but we're going to let this thing mix through and we'll come back again in 10 minutes and we'll start to fill up this time. So, we are going to take a mature filter from this very successful tank here. There's bazillions of little baby shrimp and stuff and whatever in here. So we're going to actually take one of the sponge filters from this. I have two or three sponge filters in all my tanks. And uh, this is a good way to shorten the cycle time in your uh, shrimp tanks if you add mature filtration from the beginning and guys I always like to add mature filtration from tanks that are successful because then you know you kind of are putting the, like, the right bacteria back into the tanks so this is going to be a simple case of just picking whatever filter we want so I'm going to take this back one here like this and we're just going to pull it up bring it to the front and we're going to inspect it because there is so many baby shrimp in this tank that um, you actually really need to be careful when you're actually removing stuff from the aquarium, right? So on the body of the actual filtration, you really don't need to worry about that much. Just give it a little shake like this. If there's any snails or whatever, they will fall off. All right, and you can see here, you get a little bit of beneficial subwasser tang and whatever else in here, right? But this is the bit you need to be careful with because Baby shrimp like to stick to everything, right? And you can almost guarantee that somewhere in here there's baby shrimp. So you just give it a little spin like this, up and down, up and down, up and down, little spin, up and down, <laughs> up and down, little spin. Right? And if there's any baby shrimp on there, they will simply come off. So that's how you do it, right? So let's grab the next one. Let's do the same thing again, little spin. You can see like the little baby shrimp there, you see it? Little spin. Come on little fellas. Come on. Let's get you off here. And we're simply going to put this filter into the top tank. There's nothing on there either. So you see now, so now we have mature filtration going into our new tank. All right, let me show you the water before we start to pump it over. I'm going to put the water in first and then we're going to add the filtration. Let's see, what is the pH? 5.54. 5.54, and it seems to be pretty stable. So that is what you're better doing when you're making your reverse osmosis water. Once you've added your buffer, which reminds me, I'll actually show you the conductivity here as well. Once you've added your buffer, you have to give it time for it to settle. 5.55, so that was the lower limit of what I was looking for, 5.5 to 5.8. So this is absolutely perfect. Right? And remember our goal was to get over 300. Let me just quickly check this for you. Does it say? 318, so that's pretty good considering that we've added acid and whatever else. And we haven't really uh, fine-tuned the conductivity at all. So that was, I think it was 15 scoops in of that GH plus in 200 liters of water to give us this conductivity, which is bang on the money for me. So in the future, that's what I'll do. I'll put 15 scoops in here. All right, guys, let's put our bag in. I've kind of zoomed in a little bit because I think you guys want to see a little bit more closer. Let's get our bag in. Just an old ADA Amazonia bag. I'm going to just push this into the corners because 
we want our water to hit this bag and, and the force to be pushed all over the place. Let me grab the water over here. Yes. Let me grab the water, let's put it in. I'm going to turn this on and I'm going to do it really slow. So I have a little controller here for this. It, is, it was actually on already. Let me see. Okay. So I'm going to do this very, very slowly in the beginning, like this, because I don't want it to make a mess of the actual soil in here. I don't want it to stir it all up and whatever else. Okay, so just take your time. We'll wait until this gets to about this level and then we'll think about putting the filtration. We'll put the power on just a little bit faster. All right. All right, shrimp place, right? So this part is, is like mega, mega, mega hard for me to actually film because I'm actually standing on, on the stool that I would normally have the tripod on for you to see stuff, but just with having a rock up so high, it's very, very hard for me to show you things that's happening in the tank, but I'm going to try my best here. And what we need to do here is we need to get the air line from the tank below it. So I'm pretty sure it's one of these ones. Let's see this first one. I'm just going to squeeze. I'm going to pinch the air line, look down under here and see if it stopped. It was, it was this one first time. So we can pull all this up. Like this, now this one is way too long. Look, look how long this is. So that's, that's a bonus. That's a bonus. We're going to take this off here. Oh. Take that off there and this little stainless steel valve I think because we're so close to the valves at the top, we're not actually not going to put this one valve on, right? So on my lower tanks, I like to put one of these valves on just so I can control the air from down there because I simply can't see a way up here and down, down there at the same time. But if you can see up here and in the tank, then it makes sense for you to remove this part and just use the one on the roof. So that is what we're going to do. Right, so let's, uh, let's grab the filter. We're actually going to need that little green bit that I took off previously. Let's put this in, you can see it here. Let's actually just pick it up because it'll be easier for me to do. All right, and I'm gonna make sure that this is fully extended and we'll adjust this as we need to. Let's get you into the tank. And make sure guys that this, this is on the bottom of the base Oh, in the middle and I'm making sure that it's well stuck on as I said that it came off one second all right so it was just the air line came off after I put it into the tank which would have been a pain to try and fix after so I just fixed it there right, so let's get this into the middle like this guys I'll show you this closer in a minute we want to make sure that the outlet is going to be below the actual final water level just just a tiny bit below right, so you can see this is already filling up enough let's take out the bag and that flow was more than good enough for us to start this tank wasn't it it was more than good enough let's actually put in our sponges while we remember on the other one like this and let's get them actually onto the filter and isn't this an awesome start for our new tank mature filtration as I said before this in general cuts down the cycle time by half right so for a tank like this it will go from being six to eight weeks to maybe three to four weeks which is fine by me and it's something that you can measure as well, right? So never take it for granted that your tank has been cycled or is cycled. Do your measurements, right? Measure your ammonia, ammonium, nitrate and nitrate, right? You really want to have as low ammonia as possible. If after a certain length of time, three or four weeks, you still have very high ammonia levels, do a decent sized water change with the same water, same type of water into the tank and just repeat. Rinse and repeat until your tank is ready. 
Alright, so I'm actually going to do nothing else to this tank today um, because I want to, the, I want the uh, soil to adjust the water parameters and whatever else. I want it to settle before we add in the plant because I think it's possible that uh, fluctuations and parameters probably stress out plants as well as it would do shrimp and fish and whatever else. Right? So we're going to let this fill up and we'll have a sit down again. Okay shrimplets, because we have so much water left over, let's check some tanks for their pH and any potential problems, right? So let's uh, first go over the tanks with the pH meter, see if any of them are too high, because I think there's probably one or two of them that are a little bit on the high side. And we'll then look at tanks to see if they are problem tanks. And if they are problem tanks, we can do a water change with this water. So let me grab the pH meter. All right, so this is a Milwaukee pH meter, 101 it's called. Um, there, I think there's a link in the description for this if you're interested in buying it. And yes, it is an affiliate link. I get a small bit of a commission from them for uh, selling their stuff basically, right? But I bought this myself, right? Nobody gave me this. I earn a very, very small commission if I sell more of them, right? Which has uh, never happened yet. <laughs> Right, so let's go in the tanks. You'll be able to hear me with the microphone. Uh, we'll be able to do some testing. So the only thing that is wrong with pH meters is they can take a little while for the pH to adjust. Right, so this one is going down already, 5.8 something. I'm just going to go from the top tanks like this. Now in your tanks, uh, when you saw all the pH is normally fine. So this is 5.76 which is fine. This one is... Let's see, is it going to move? 5.7... 5.79 which is fine. We're all in that ballpark range. And I like to give my pH probe a little swirl like this. So this is one of the ones that went up over six, right? So this is one of the tanks that we could do a water change with. So I'm going to grab one of my little bits of red electricity tape, 6.06, .06, and we're going to stick it right in the front. This is one of the tanks that we'll do a water change in. This one, let's see. Now normally you can tell just by looking at the numbers how fast it's going down, if it's going to be good. This one's going down, it's 5.8 already. So all the newer ones, guys, are normally fine. 5.65, 5.64, this one's dropping quite a lot. 5.32, 5.4, this one's quite low. So all I'm looking for here is under, uh, under 5.8 between 5.5. Right? If it's below 5.5 there's not really much you can do about it because that is where your soil is buffering your water to. This one's actually quite low, it's 5.2. This one I would expect to be high. Let's give it a minute. But the reason I'm not changing this tank guys is because it's full of shrimp, full of baby shrimp. 5.9 and climbing. There's tons and tons of baby shrimp in here, so why change something that isn't broken? Six, already it's up over six. When it stops climbing, guys, I'll come back. Hopefully I remember to edit this part. Oh, or we could look at it like this. It's already above six. It's already at 6.2. Let's put a red marker on it for a water change. We're simply going to be adding some softer water to it, and that is it. 5.61, 5.5, so this one's fine. And there are ways, guys, that you can reduce the pH as well, not just through reducing pH with RO water. If, if for example, your tank is too high in pH, you can do the thing that I showed you guys to do before, where you get a glass container, or some kind of container, just fill it with soil that you know will reduce it below that level and put it somewhere in the tank. Right? It's something I often do. I think we did it in this one quite recently, right? so it'll be interesting to see 
what pH this one is here. So this one's 5.7, which is fine. This is the one that we just did. This is one of the tanks that we set up last week. Let's see what it is, 5.4, 5.3, Now I suspect that this one has a lot of ammonia in it because this was ADAV V1. So I'm going to put a red marker on this and this is for us to check it guys. Because this was set up on the 13th of the 5th. I think it's just past the end of the month. It's only been set up for two weeks. Let's see, this is an older tank. I think this is one of the oldest tanks in my room. It'll be interesting to see what this one is. It's climbing 5.5, 5.4, 5.6, 5.7. It's not climbing mega fast. So it suggests to me that this is fine. 5.69, 5.7. Yeah, this one's actually fine. I'm surprised because I thought this one was would have been higher and this was one of the ones where I added ADA V1 an actual layer about a centimetre across the whole bottom of the tank 5.77 so this was one of the ones that I thought might be too high this one be interesting to see what the final number is here 5.92 5.94 5.86 5.81 yeah it's going low that one's good these guys had babies this morning here little blue bolts everywhere. Yeah, this one is very low. 5.45. It's dropping quite fast. Test the big one. This this one is very low as well actually. 5.15. This one's very low. But it could be just the sheer volume of ADAV1 that's in here. 5.1. Alright, so we have a couple of tanks to check and test. So, uh, some of these I'm pretty sure just need a water change and the newer ones we can check for ammonia. All right, so let's do that. I'm going to bring you over here because I don't want you looking at the same thing all the time. All right, Shrimplets, so in a nutshell, what we have here is we have three tanks to do a water change in and we have one tank that we need to check for ammonia. But it, it doesn't really matter. I think it, we're going to check for ammonia, but we probably will have to do a water change in it anyway. And when, when it's a brand new tank like this, you can change quite a lot of water. So we'll see. We'll see what it is. I have a feeling it's high. But um, yeah, all tanks need some ammonia in the beginning to start with. So I think we may actually just do like base layer type water changes, base base number type water changes. Let me rinse this in here. So they, we're going to use a Sarah pH, Sarah ammonia test kit. God, I'm so bad at sometimes for mixing up words. And this test kit needs 10 ml of water. So let's clean our little vial here. Let's get some more water. So that's two of these. It's 10 mil and a set of test kit. Hope you like my shorts by the way. So it's 10 mil for this type of test kit, right? So let's show you this. You want to measure to till the half bubbly arch thing is above the 10 mil line. So I'm going what I see guys, you might see something different like that you see it and of course I actually need the actual test kit so the reason I've been using the Sera ones is because they are just instant so whatever number whatever it is that you see initially is the actual result basically which I like because I, I, I don't like it when you're looking at uh, charts that are colour charts that change colour and you know you, you're like it's went green already but it's only been two minutes or is it to go yellower or greener or I just like the first impression so whatever it is that's what's going to be let me pull you right over here because you'll be able to see this can you see the colours you kind of can see I like to go by the very very first impression that I see and it's always important they have the light on above you as well so what is it in this is it six I can't remember six drops of the first region one two three four five six and always put your 
lids back on in between give it a little gentle stir like this let's move on to the next one this is also six and the reason you want to put your lids on guys one two three four five six is so you don't get your regent lids mixed up because you can contaminate one regent by putting the wrong lid on let's give this a little stir just a little bit like this and six more I think yes it is so it's whatever the first impression that is I see here physically in front of me with my own eyeball is what's going to be one two three four five six as looks very yellow to me which means the ammonia has actually been eaten up already which isn't surprising guys it isn't surprising so that's been two weeks and it's not surprising that there's no detectable ammonia in there already because you want me to show you why let me show you all right can you see why look at the plants here do you remember how many we put in these plants have absolutely covered the surface already look at them all right guys if i'm wrong i'm going to say i'm wrong about something so i i assumed that this was instant this test result but look at this that's quite clearly not yellow and it's been like a fraction of a minute after i've sat down after showing you all those plants that is very very green and so that is a way 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 up there you see it so let me just quickly read this in the English part because I am sure it says it is like instant. Let me let me just quickly read and I'll get back to you in a second. All right, so I found out what the issue was there. Right? So for testing ammonia and ammonium with the Sarah test kits, it is actually five minutes. So this is correct. There is quite a high dose of uh, ammonium or ammonia in this actual tank right so we can do a pretty decent sized water change on this one right so where my confusion came from there guys was this look it's the ph1 it's actually the ph sera test kit that you can actually measure or get a result from instantly right so i thought it's quite important to clarify that there because yeah it wasn't instant and you can see the result mistakes mark trying not to make any more Alright guys, so I thought it was very important to clarify that and, you know, say what I needed to say regarding these, this stuff because, yeah, maybe I've been doing it wrong all along and maybe I've picked up wrong information in the past and repeated it as fact when it's probably not correct at all. And that is the assumption that ammonia isn't toxic at uh, a low pH because it converts to ammonium. Now, it's, it's kind of like me saying uh, chlorine, for example, is uh, safe for us to drink. It's, it's like me saying it's the same thing, saying ammonium, a uh, low pH is safe because it's, because that, whatever. You guys probably know what I'm getting at here is, as in there will be safe limits for all chemicals, not just humans, but for um, animals as well. So I'm, I'm not 100% sure that it's true this thing that we've always went by the ammonium at low pH or ammonia at low pH because it converted to ammonium is safe for our shrimp right and, and guys I want to edge more and more on the side of what if it isn't safe what if it isn't right so I want to eliminate all possibilities of why shrimp might not breeding not might not be breeding because all animals including us will have different toxicity levels for different chemicals and the one I said there but chlorine is a perfect example Right, if I drink chlorine right now, it would kill me. Right, if I just drank 5% chlorine, just, just like this, drunk it, it would probably kill me. Right, but if you have uh, certain levels of chlorine, like in Scotland and Britain, for example, they put chlorine in the water, and it doesn't kill people because it's such a low level. Right, and I think it is similar with shrimp, with ammonia and ammonium, but nobody really knows what those lower limits are and I'm, I'm not really comfortable telling people anymore that because ammonia is converted to ammonium at a low pH is shrimp safe I'm just not I'm not happy giving people that information because I think it maybe makes them rush the cycling process and you know potentially killing the shrimp so from now on we're going to edge on the, on the side of caution 
when I'm doing tanks, this is going to be a good example, it's one up here. Um, I'm going to make sure that this ammonia, ammonia I'm reading here, is actually yellow before we put a shrimp near the tank. Does that make sense? Hopefully you guys can follow what I'm talking about here, right? So we, I'm just going to do a quick test on some of these tanks here. If you want to just sit and wait with me a few minutes, we'll pan you down a little bit so you can see the table again. Because what else was I wrong about, guys? Let's see. So we're going to do another test on a tank along here. Now these, these guys are fine in there, right? But they haven't bred at all. Then it's, it's the grow out tank. And I've wondered why it has taken them a little while to actually do anything. Let me quickly just close this and rinse it properly. Why it's taken a while for them to actually do anything. And I wonder if it's because is there a, a trace of, of ammonium in this tank still? So when you're adding soils to tanks like we've done before to uh, lower the pH, you're probably inadvertently adding ammonia to the tank and it could be a problem. So whenever you're adding soils and stuff to the tank, just always side guys, always do it on the side of caution. Just a little bit more. Right, so let's break out the, our little test case again. It's just the same as before. I'm going to put this into this little folder here because it's nice to keep this stuff protected. And then on this white background, you see? Just an A4 piece of paper. Let's uh, do our little test again. So this is on this, this end test here. This tank was started not that long ago actually. It was, it's maybe about three months old. Right, so that's just past the recommended time for cycling, isn't it? Normally it's between six, six and eight weeks. Right, let's see, six. Is there any ammonium in this? Or ammonia? One. Two, three, four, five, six. Well, this is going to be a long video today, but you can see what it's like when I come in here and I start doing stuff. One, two, three, four, five, six. Because I have a very, very sneaky suspicion, guys. If you reduce the ammonia and ammonium to zero, your tanks will be much healthier. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this one looks yellow. So this is the mistake I made the last time here. I jumped to a conclusion far too fast. Right? So this is meant to be five minutes. It's meant to be five minutes. And then you look at this. If there's any ammonia at all, it will start to turn green. Can you even see that? You can barely see it. Let me see. Let me just pan you in a little tad, so you can see. So, so far it looks good. Um, but some of the tanks we're not going to test for ammonia here. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to keep the ones that I need to change, guys. We'll come back to that in a minute. The ones that I need to change, right? So we're going to have ones that we have to change because of ammonia, right, this one, so we should probably keep that as a red thing. And then these other ones are just uh, water changes, because these are not new tanks, These, this one, that one, and that one's not a new tank. So all those ones need is a water change. Shall we do those, do those water changes? Maybe just take out 10 litres of each one, fill them back up again, and that's that done. All right, let's do that. All right, guys, I'm recording yet. So let's do 10 in each of these tanks. And yeah, we'll fill them back up. I can already see that this, this test that we did with this ammonia is good. It's still very yellow, you see? So there's no ammonia in that one. So I did have one single problem tank in the shrimp room, which was uh, way over here. I think we'll also test it for ammonia. I'm going to remove the sticker from this one, put it on that tank there. And by what I mean guys when I'm saying 
a problem tank is. I mean, um, a problem tank more than a month ago, I think it is recovered now. After we changed the general hardness, the GH in it, we put in uh, our water going back into the tank was much higher conductivity than before and it stopped the issue I had. So the issue I had before was failed molts in that one tank. So that's 10 out of this one. And then we're going to do 10 out of this one. And then I'll do that one up there. Because this, this tank that we need to do, the bigger one, um, it's probably going to be an, an almost, the one that was green, remember the results, it was almost green? We can do a really big water change in that tank, so yeah, I'll do that in a second. I'll be right back, guys. Hello there. Right, so my camera kind of cut out the battery died, mother camera, so I actually have lost tons of footage. Well, I, I thought I was recording, but apparently the camera died, so I was there for a good at least half an hour still recording me doing water changes and stuff and yeah so i was gonna say lost footage but it wasn't even recorded in the first place guys you didn't miss very much we basically filled the tanks and i just wanted to say guys thank you for watching this week if you would like to watch more then please go over here and watch another one this will be a video that youtube picks for you to watch also remember hit that like button smash it with your forehead hmm.